Come on, put your hands together. Come on. Take your neighbor by the hand and say, I have no other choice but to trust him. That's all I can do. I have no other choice but to believe. And tell them why. Because signs follow them that believe. I believe God. I believe God. Hey, when things are going crazy, when things are out of whack, I have a choice to trust him and to keep on believing. Tell somebody I do it best when I believe God. I know he's able. I wish I had a witness. I know he's able. Hallelujah. So I'm going to keep on trusting him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody ought to tell the devil, I'm trusting God. I don't care what you're trying. I'm trusting God. I don't care what you're saying. I'm trusting God. Oh, I know, I know, I know that all things work together for good to them that love him. And I love him this morning. Come on and wave your hand one time for the spirit of God. Oh, see what God is able to do. It's in him we live and move and have our being. Oh, y'all singing, choir. Y'all singing. Oh, y'all singing. Ah, I like when you're singing something that makes sure I have no other choice. I know sometimes things can get rough and the devil be telling you how to just throw in the towel. But you say, I got a choice in this. I'm going to trust God. Tell somebody, anybody can quit. Anybody can run away. But somebody got to stand there on the promise of God and tell the devil, I'm trusting Jesus. He did it one time before. He'll do it again. Can I get a witness? Have he ever brought you out? Have he ever brought you through? Show sure, yeah. 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 If he did it once, he'll do it again. Come on and give him a praise in his house today. Go ahead and praise him. You don't know like I know what God have already done. But can I tell you something? The best is yet to come in Jesus' name. Hey, hey, hey. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, 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 hey. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Ah, oh, you ought to tell, you ought to tell the Lord, you've done too much for me. I can't just sit in. I ain't come to act cute. I come to consider the whole matter. And when I consider what the Lord have already done, I have to say thank you, Jesus. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Praise is comely of the upright. It's expected out of you. When you see what God has fixed you and put, and put you and turn your life around, you can't help but say thank you, Jesus. Every step I take, every breath I make, I want to be saying hallelujah anyhow. Thank you, Jesus. Because if the devil had his way, none of us would be here this morning. But I'm glad the Lord is in this thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, uh, if you got your Bibles, come on, let's get in this word today. We want to expose the devil and reveal Jesus Christ. Won't he bless you? The word is life to those that find it. The word is medicine to all of your flesh. I said the word is medicine to all your flesh. And sometimes you can put medicine on a cut and you expect it to be all right. You can put this word on your flesh. When that old flesh is acting up, you can take the word and say, oh, no, 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 you need to straighten up here. I wish I had somebody go with me. Thank you, Jesus. If you have Bible today, I would if you would stand with me this morning while we read out of the book of Matthew, chapter 26. Amen. What a mighty God we serve. Amen. Come on and stand with me with Matthew, chapter 26. For you Bible readers, that's in the New Testament. Amen. Matthew, then there's Mark, and then there's... 
Luke, and then John. They used to tell the young ladies, when you go on a date, take your Bible with you. In case that guy start acting up, it's hard for him to climb over top of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Somewhere I to get some control in there. Huh? Yeah. Read a few verses out of the 26th chapter. And when I get to verse 41, I wish that everyone would join in with me as I read that verse, or as we read it. I begin reading. In verse 34, Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, that this night before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. Peter said unto him, though I should die with thee, yet will I not deny thee. Likewise also said all the disciples. I would like to insert here and let you know that a lot of times we say a lot of things that we can't back up. Uh, there used to be a saying in the street that you could write a check. Uh, <laughs> uh, some of y'all know where I'm at. Okay, that's, that's enough of that. Then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane and said unto the disciples, sit here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then said he unto them, my soul is exceeding sorrowful even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou will. And he cometh unto the disciples and findeth them asleep. And he said unto Peter, What? Could ye not watch with me one hour together? Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the word. It is life to those that find it. We thank you for the instructions that help us to understand that circumstances can be changed with the authority of the word of God. In Jesus' name, be glorified in what's said today, that souls be saved, lives change, darkness is revealed, amen, and the Spirit of God makes live those who hear this word of truth. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. From this last verse 41, and watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. The Spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. I have a question for us today. What do I do about this flesh? Come on and look at your neighbor if you're not afraid of him. Look at him, look at him, look him right in the eye. See some of y'all looking up here at me. Look at your neighbor, the person closest to you right there. Say, what do I do about this flesh? Oh, there's a lot of talk about the spirit moving song singing I feel the spirit moving moving but it ain't the spirit that's giving us any problems ah oh, the spirit wants to help us the spirit is given to every man to profit with though but that flesh oh y'all look at me like I'm in the wrong place see I'm convinced that the world is never gonna see the power of God through the church until we do something about that flesh ah, come on come on grab somebody by the hand and just hold that hand and say yeah yeah you flesh you got flesh yeah see some of y'all so spiritual you act like you ain't even got nobody no more you better come on back here 
Uh, I know you're speaking in tongues and in algebra and geometry. I know you're speaking all them funny languages, but you still got a body you got to deal with. You still got a mind that must be dealt with. If your mind was all that great and wonderful, the Lord never would have said, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Shout amen, somebody. Something must be done about this flesh. Now, I know you want to look and think about somebody you know or you think you know, but think about the person that's closest to you, and that would be you. Come on and say it again. What do I do, I do about this flesh? Here the apostle Paul said to the Romans in Romans 7, 24, O wretched man that I am. Who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I want you to know that Paul was not uh, describing his spiritual condition. Spiritually, Paul was fine. And I want you to understand, because you having issues with your flesh, don't mean your spirit is messed up. Hallelujah. According to God's word, which cannot lie, when a man or woman is born again, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. You have a new spirit when you get saved. Hello, somebody. The Bible teaches us that in 1 John 4, 17, say, listen, as he is in this world, so are we. Spiritually, we are just like Jesus in the spirit. But that ain't where the problem is at. The problem is in the flesh. And the flesh is referring to not only physical, but your thinking. Because what you think is going to be produced or revealed through your actions, which is your flesh. Hello, somebody. Uh, Paul said, I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. Now be careful now because Paul recognized there ain't no good thing in my flesh. But he had to recognize, see, when you go into Philemon, he said, listen, if your faith is going to be effective, you've got to acknowledge every good thing that's in you in Christ Jesus. See, the good that we have to boast in is only because of Christ who is in us. And when we allow the Christ that is in us to live through us, then the flesh will learn how to behave. Now, don't y'all sit down on me too long. You was running a few minutes ago and, and feeling pretty good. Jesus told the disciples a very simple thing. Sit down here and watch. I won't be long, but I want you to just sit here and watch. Jesus knew the condition, amen, of or the atmosphere of the day. He knew the devil wanted to kill him. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Therefore, he needed to talk one more time to the Father. I like this. He told him, I want you to watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. And then he looked at him and said, the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh. Huh? The flesh is what? Is weak. In other words, just when you thought you could handle that thing, the flesh and showed up that you ain't all the man or woman you thought you were. God heard you when you say, I'll never do that. And the devil heard you. And the flesh heard you. And if you don't allow the spirit man to rise up and be an authority, the flesh will win every time. Uh, our spirits, now help me all help me preach, I won't be long. Our spirits are not the problem as born again believers or Christians I want you to I want to say it again you have received a new spirit you are new in Christ you have a spirit that speaks and leaks and smells and and just reveals victory it's in your spirit and the Lord fixed this thing so good because he knew that if we had control we mess it up so when we believe on him when we receive the gospel message and invited Jesus to come and live inside of us, according to the scripture in Ephesians 1, it says, listen, 
he sealed us with the Holy Spirit of promise. He put inside of us everything we're going to need. God, help me with this. To be conquerors in Jesus Christ. He sealed it so you can lose it when you're acting crazy, when your flesh is acting up. Because if we can lose it, when we act up, it'll be a lot of folks riding around on empty right now. Watch this. Our born again spirits are always willing to do the will of God. Can I get one witness? Look at somebody say, my, my spirit is willing to do God's will. But my flesh gets in the way sometimes. I know, you, I know you faith folks don't want to say that, but your flesh get in the way sometimes. According to the word of God, the flesh wars against the spirit. They are contrary to each other. Your body, your spirit man, are y'all hearing me, wants to do God's will. But the way we have been trained to think and believe is hostile against God until we renew our mind. That's why folks like everything else except God and his word. That's why Peter and them went to sleep. Just like you go to sleep when it's time to read the Bible. Some of you will never go to sleep when there's a good movie on. You'll watch it all the way through. But when preaching and teaching and ministry come up, all of a sudden now the devil give you the ho-hums. Y'all ain't saying nothing. The flesh wars against the spirit. I'm here to tell you this morning through this message, you got to be straight with yourself. You got to do something about the flesh. Look at somebody say, I mean that. The flesh complains. God, let me moan a little bit. I say the flesh complains when it should be praising God. The flesh wants to sit down when it should be standing up for Jesus. Hey, the flesh wants to let go when it ought to be holding on. Flesh wants to quit and run when it ought to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding. Oh, the flesh wants to get upset when it ought to have the joy of the Lord. I'm talking about the flesh. We got to do something about this flesh. The flesh want to have an attitude with folks. Right? In the church, when we ought to be the loving folks, showing the love of the Lord. I know y'all ain't never seen this. Folks in the church mad at one another. Folks in the church don't even have a smile to share. Folks in the church holding on to grudges. Can't give God a praise because you're mad at somebody. What you going to do about that flesh? Ask your neighbor, what you going to do? Paul said, for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, they mind the things of the spirit. All he was saying was what Solomon said. Solomon said, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And so when you got carnal thoughts all the time, there's going to be a carnal display out of your flesh. When you are not meditating on the word of God, there will be no visible change in your actions. That's why you can be saved and still act like the devil because the spirit man is saved, but your mind have not been renewed. Show ya! Show ya! Yes! What you gonna do? Look at him and say, what you gonna do about this flesh? Yeah, carnal thinking can only produce death while spiritual thinking can only produce life uh-huh to be carnally minded is death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace when you see folks always messed up always tore up ready to throw up ready to back up something is wrong with the way they're thinking but if you got a spiritual appetite if your mind is stayed on Jesus 
He said, I will keep you in perfect peace. Yes, he did. But you got to do something about the flesh. And that means you got to put something to the flesh that will bring the flesh under control. Shout amen. Tell somebody, I need some help here. I'm trying, I'm trying to preach to some honest folks. I ain't thinking about you crooks who ain't... But you honest folks say, I need some help here. Some of y'all trying to sit there like, not me. Come on here and work with me on this. You know you need some help. If the truth be told, can I tell the truth for a minute? If the truth be told, your flesh and my flesh always want what God don't want it to have. I said the truth be told. Can I, y'all give me permission. Can I tell the truth? Flesh always wants something other than what God wanted to have. That's why folks are always in trouble. Because they're looking on the other side wanting something that God don't want them to have. The flesh, y'all preach with me, say the flesh, flesh. always wants to go where God does not want it to go. Oh yeah. The flesh always want to say what God does not want it to say. Y'all know we can say some stuff because we're in the flesh. Instead of us being humble and, and, and taking something, we have made up our mind I ain't taking nothing off nobody. But that is not the Christian way. When Jesus was reviled, the Bible said he reviled not. When they came against him, Jesus didn't fight back. The Bible said he humbled himself. He came obedient unto the cross. Came obedient unto death. Even the death of the cross. It's not easy to turn the other cheek. But when you get the flesh under control, tell somebody I can take something now because I got the flesh where it pulled to be. My mind have been changed. You are not be happy because you're in church 30, 40 years and still can't take nothing. I know when you first get saved, somebody might step on your shoe and you react quickly because you just got saved. But 30 years later, oh, that's okay. No, some of y'all want to go up under somebody and body slam them and suplex them. The flesh always wants what God does not want it to have. Ah, uh, somebody got some of y'all got somebody in your life God don't want you to have. But the flesh is in control. So God just needs to be quiet and let you handle this. After all, I'm saved. I made a decision for Jesus, but I didn't make no commitment. See, that's just like when a man and a woman decide they want to get married. Preach, Bishop. They both made a decision, but the marriage ain't going to work unless there's a commitment. Some of y'all saying, I want to be saved, Jesus. I want to be in your church, Jesus. But I won't commit, Jesus. Therefore, I can still do what I want to do when I want to do it because my flesh has more control than the spirit. Ask them again, what you going to do about that flesh? Uh, some of y'all know the spirit of God be trying to knock on the door and tell you, no, 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 no. You be saying, stop, stop. I don't know how many times you've elbowed the Holy Ghost in the mouth saying, leave me alone. Stop. Let me have my way. The Lord trying to hold you back and keep you from making a fool out of yourself. And you are pushing, stop Lord, stop Lord. Because your flesh, your flesh wants to have its way. Peter, can't you just wait for an hour? Lord, we tired. You tired because you're walking by flesh and not by the spirit. Tell somebody the spirit will pump you up. The spirit will energize you. 
The spirit will put something inside of you better than a five hour energy drink. My God, you can make it and you can take it. Come on, preacher, get on out of here. You say it won't be long. Paul said these words. He said, listen, see, the flesh wants you to act the way God said don't act. Paul said, if through the spirit you do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. Paul said, you've got to mortify the deeds of the body. The word mortify for you folks out there, it was translated from a Greek word, tanetu. And that means to kill. So that means your flesh have got to go up under the knife. And since no steak knife is good enough and no butcher knife is good enough, you got to use the word. Something sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing even to the dividing of son of both soul and spirit. Good God Almighty. The word uh, mortify means to discipline one's body and appetites by self-denial. You know we've got to a place where we know what we want. We know when we want it and we know how we like it. Yeah. Ah, y'all ain't saying that. No, y'all was shouting with me a few minutes ago. And you got to do something about that flesh. Because the same monkey made out of you last year is going to make the, another monkey out of you this year. Oh, uh, y'all ain't got to say, man. Uh, you can be a repeat performer. Every time you mess up, you turn around and mess up the same way or worse because you have not disciplined and brought yourself to a place of self-denial. Jesus said, if any man will come after me, he got to deny himself. He got to take up his cross and follow me. You cannot follow Jesus without following the scripture. You never pick up a Bible till it's church time. Then you holler at everybody, where my Bible? Where I leave it at? Well, it fell off the car. We found it when you left out the parking lot last Sunday. And we got it here in the lost and found. So we know it ain't in your house. You done tore up everything, cuss everybody out because you thought they'd move your Bible. And you done drop the thing out of the parking lot. I might leave one of my children behind, but if I don't have my Bible, I get uneasy. Where my, where my sword at? I need this. Ah. Uh, ask your neighbor, say, what do I do about the flesh? What do I do about the flesh? This is my answer. Ask for help. Come on, ask somebody, say, help me. I did the same thing. I say, what should I do about this flesh? And the spirit say, ask for some help. And so I try to figure out who can I ask for some help. Oh, Lord. And so I begin to check the scriptures and say, maybe there's somebody in the scripture that I can ask for some help. And then I page through the Bible. I say, let's start in the beginning. And I saw a man by the name of Adam. I say, Adam. Can you help me with this flesh? Adam said, I'm sorry, Bishop. I got problems of my own. I messed up in the garden. I could not do nothing about my own flesh. I ate of the fruit and messed up everything. I said, well, let me bypass Adam. I'm going to ask Saul because he was a king standing six feet two in the Bible. Maybe Saul can help me. Saul, can you help me? But Saul said, I'm sorry, Bishop. I can't help you with your flesh. I got problems with my own flesh. You see, I had a spirit of jealousy. I was jealous of David. I knew God was going to make him king. But I was so jealous, I tried to kill him. Yeah. I said, well, let me talk to David. David, can you help me with my flesh? And David said, Bishop, I would if I could, but I can't, so I ain't. I got problem with my own flesh. I say, what do you mean? He said, Bishop, don't you know I was an adulterer and a murderer? Oh, I needed help myself. And I began to get dismayed. And I wondered who could help me. And I heard the word say, oh, wretched man that I am. Who shall deliver me from the body of this death? And I heard the Holy Ghost says, 
there is somebody that can help you his name is wonderful his name is counselor he is the everlasting father he is the mighty God he is the prince of peace and if you call him he's able to do exceeding abundantly above all you ask or think you can't help yourself but you can get the Holy Ghost the spirit of the living God he will help us with our flesh shall ye yeah. yeah yeah how can he help me he can help me because he's no longer sitting up high and looking low but he came flesh took on sin for flesh condemned sin in the flesh the bible say the word of god was made flesh he suffered bled and died so he could help us with our flesh ask your neighbor say what can i do about this flesh tell somebody you got to turn it over to the spirit of the living god why because when jesus died he died to give us power over this flesh watch this the world was notified sinners got justified hearts were purified the devil was horrified can i get a witness and when he got up he was justified and i heard him say it shall come to pass in the last day i will pour out of my spirit where up on all flesh that's what we got to do about the flesh we got to get the flesh up under the pouring of the spirit because if we don't get the spirit the flesh gonna rule us and keep controlling us but i heard jesus say after the holy ghost has come you shall get somebody high five say you shall have power 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 to do something about your flesh you can't do it on your own you need holy ghost power you need power from on high you need a power that's greater than you got greater than alcohol greater than drugs greater than your personality you need the spirit of the living god to help you with your flesh so yeah so yeah tell somebody once y'all tell them once you get filled with the holy ghost you're gonna receive power what kind of power the bible says it's the same power that raised jesus from the dead it'll quicken your flesh it'll bring the flesh to a place where it want to be submissive to the authority of god so yeah yeah when you get up under the pouring of the holy spirit and stay there your flesh i say your flesh will no longer control you but you with the help of the spirit will control your flesh you can bind desires you can cast down every imagination bring it under the subjection of the power of god you can tell yourself shut up tell yourself sit down tell your body keep your hands to yourself keep your pants zipped up keep your drawers on and your dress down you can do something about your flesh if you get the holy ghost yeah i don't say come on and say amen somebody i know you're looking at me crazy but we need help with this flesh too much flesh in the church we want a hoochie coochie on saturday and shout on sunday but i bet damn if we're going to heaven like that you gotta be clean washed in the blood of the crucified one and what good is it to take a bath to get washed and go right back into the same cesspool shall yeah say help me lord say help me lord with my flesh it want to do wrong 
but I know you want me to do right because you got good thoughts of me. Amen, somebody. Jesus, Jesus had the words that I speak unto you. They are spirit. You will never get control of the flesh if you ignore the words he speak unto us. We need his spirit. Your nasty mind will only get nastier. You ever wonder why folks can be in church all their life and still be mean? Because they would not respond to the word. It'll change you. You can't find no place in the scripture where somebody called out to Jesus and said, help me, Lord. And he spoke a word and they were not changed. But there were two parts of that. Not only did he speak that word, they had to receive it. Because he said, listen, faith come by hearing. And on many occasions, he told them, your faith have made you whole. You're not going to get what you need from God without his word. You can't separate the two. Shout amen if you want to. If you never shout again, that's between you and your flesh. God's word will help us. Somebody say, my help is in the Lord. It'll help us discipline our flesh. It'll help us take control of our flesh. We can't just think like we've been thinking. If you feed yourself a bunch of junk, God know you're going to be thinking junk. We in a time now, folks, got computers and phones. They can go online and watch all kinds of crap right in the hand. Y'all ain't saying nothing. And they get the flesh all worked up. Now they can't even have a decent conversation with the opposite sex because they're thinking when they look at that person what they just got through looking at on the. And then you come into the church, you ain't got no reason to praise God because the flesh is in control. You don't want to be saying thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Flesh is looking around trying to spot another prey. Uh, look at that, look at that, look at that. God's word will help us. I say to help us. How many of y'all want help? I know some of y'all didn't raise your hand because you don't want no help. I know God knows you don't want none. But somebody wants help. And God's word will help us do something about this flesh. When we take the word of God, It'll reveal to us who we are and that we don't have to live beneath our privileges any longer. We can live where God has positioned us, seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, above all principality and power and might and dominion, every name this name, not only in this world, but the world to come when you won't help. You will take your place in power you tell the devil I'm above only. I'm not one of them sometime up and sometime down folks. No matter how my circumstances may look, I have agreed with God I am where God says I am. And tell somebody my actions will always speak louder. Y'all fill it in than my words. I am a seated, I'm seated in the blessing section not the curse section. Huh? I'm seated with the well, folks. I'm seated with positive folks. I'm not going to get part of that, that negative crowd. Can't see no good in nobody. Come to church with have already had 10 hell raising pills before you get out the car. Popping them pills and so you can raise hell when you get in church. Come into church mad. Can I tell you a secret about a smile? If you ever smile, you can imprison your frown. 
long as you got a frown on your face, you have imprisoned your smile. And some of you folks who are supposed to be sanctified, I don't even like looking at you with your frowned up face. I look at you, I don't like it, but I look at you. Always got a frown on your face like the world owe you something. No, nobody owe you nothing. You owe God everything and you're too honored to pay him. You won't even say thank you, Jesus, for the air he's giving you to breathe right now. What you going to do about that flesh? Because I'm here to tell you, if you don't do nothing about it, won't nothing get done. Oh, I know it would be easy for us to come to the altar, come on to the altar, and we come up there, lay hands on me. So God will knock this hell out of me. I'm sorry, it don't work like that. If that be the case, we just get a bat and go through the congregation. Everybody be straight. Right? Okay. But it don't work like that. Everybody over the Genesis walking straight. The preacher just got through in the middle. How does it work, preacher? There must be an attitude of submission. You got to submit yourself to God, to what his word requires. And then when that flesh act up, you can resist it. Because ain't nobody but the devil trying to tell you to act stupid and keep on acting like that. Getting mad. I ain't going to sing because they won't let me lead the song. You ain't going to never lead no song like that attitude. The only song we let you sing is on the back row when you say, shall we gather at the river? And we're going to all gather that so I can baptize you again and hold you down till you come to, to your sins. <laughs> you praying for me, H. Thank you, Adam, baby. Let me get out of here. Whoa. Tell somebody we must continually yield to the Holy Spirit to live a life that brings glory to the name of Jesus. To live a life that shows love as an active part of our character. For God is love. And he that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. I want to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. So I make up my mind not only to ask for help for this flesh, but to make a decision to do something about it by telling my flesh to sit down and be still as I yield to the spirit of the living God.
you feel God moving, if you feel him moving, I say if you feel him moving, you feel him doing a change in you, you feel him breaking up some stuff, moving some stuff around, changing the way you think, changing the way you act, and you made up your mind, I'm going to cooperate this time. Oh, yeah. Shake somebody's hand and say, I feel him moving. Oh, 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 wow, wow, all over me. Yeah, yeah. I'm not the same. I said, I'm not the same. Something had happened. I came one way, but I'm going back another way because the Spirit of God was moving all over me. Shout yes, somebody. Come on, touch somebody. Say, do you feel it? Touch them, touch them on the shoulder. Say, do you feel it? Say, there's power where you can feel God. You ought to feel him sometime. You ought to let him, let him touch you sometime. It ought to shake you sometime. 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 Tell somebody, sometime. You ought to be able to dance. Sometime. You ought to be able to run. Sometime. You ought to feel something. You make you move. Get in the Holy Ghost group. dry bones. Prophesy to them. Prophesy to them dry bones. Oh, that's in the law. Go ahead and move, Sister McCoy. Somebody feels something. Somebody got something. Hey. I remember some years ago, my spiritual mother, church lady, church mother, Pastor Evangelist Mother Mildred Hash said, I wouldn't serve a God I couldn't feel every now and then. Of course, Mother Hash felt them all the time because then the service go by where she wasn't jumping. But I thought about that. I say, now when we were serving the devil, we got his spirit in us and we just moved and grooved. Whether we was in step, out of step. Whether we could dance or couldn't dance. We had that juice or that stuff in us and we move then you get saved and go crazy get all stiff and dried up and the Lord was preserving you while you was out there serving the devil God was taking care of you, wasn't the devil, the devil trying to kill you but God preserved you and then you get in church and still won't still won't give him a praise somebody got to pry you up got to set a firecracker by you to get you to get up and say thank you Jesus girl if you if, come on if you really knew I don't care how folks look at me, they ain't gonna stop me from thanking God. Honey, I get to thinking how good he is. My hands go up, my feet start moving. One go one way, it might go the other way. Look like I'm eagle spreading. But I'm doing something. I'm gonna preach a message one Sunday. Why are you so dry? Cause you know you get too dry, you you catch on fire. Hey, lightning ain't gotta be ain't gotta be no storm. Lightning hit cross towel, you start burning. Listen, let me let me let y'all out here. I have a question. Can I ask five questions, six questions, and we can go home? Y'all ready for this? Listen carefully. Suppose you have to run for church membership as a candidate runs for political office, would you win or lose? Suppose your membership was good for only one year and your re-election depended upon the good you had done in the church during that time. Would you be re-elected based on what you've done, the good you've done for a year? Suppose your name would be dropped from membership 
if you didn't win to Christ at least one person a year, how long would you remain a member? Some of y'all would have been gone. Win one person a year. Some of y'all ain't been here 10 years, ain't won nobody. Suppose you were asked to explain just why your church should keep your name on the roll. Do you have a record of helpful service to offer in your defense? A record showing how helpful you've been to the church to offer as a defense for us to keep your name on the roll? Watch this. Suppose every member of the church did as much work for the church as you are presently doing. Would more seats be needed or would the doors of the church be closed? Here's the last one. Suppose you were arrested for being a Christian. Would there be enough evidence to convict you? Some of y'all to just throw it out. Ain't no evidence. Throw it out. Throw it, throw it out. Officer, I don't know why you're arrested for being a Christian. Hey, hey, you got no evidence. You can go free. <laughs> y'all laughing, but those are some serious questions. Because sometimes we get so caught up trying to please us and others and we fail to please the one who have called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. God bless you today. Before we close today, if there's anyone here who have never made a decision for Jesus Christ and you'd like to be saved today, today is your day. There are young men and young ladies here that if you need to be saved, they'll take you to the room and show you how to be saved through the blood of Jesus Christ and his word. If there's someone who needs to be restored, we can show you the same thing. But I'm so interested in you folks who already love God and are willing to say, I've made a decision today to do something about my flesh. Amen. God bless you.